It's time for a cup of coffee with Will and Chris at Slumberland Furniture. From Slumberland Furniture in Osage Beach, here are your hosts, William Holtz and Chris Schneider. Guess who's back? Sorry to disappoint, not Nathan Bechtold. It's me, Wild Will, <laughs> Uncle Chris, a cup of coffee. I'm back from Myrtle Beach. You're I'm still refreshed. wearing the golf digs there, yeah, huh? I'll, I'll tell you guys all oh, about okay. my father-son golf trip out there to South Carolina. It was epic. And yeah, I'm still in the golf mood. I may head to the uh, driving <laughs> range after this. Okay. Uh, I'm feeling it. We got a lot to tell you on this week's cup of coffee. Not just that, we have Annie Falstich from Lakefront Living Realty. She'll tell us about that experience with the American Dream TV about yeah. to debut. Love Annie, she's so great. Yeah, and this is a pretty cool deal. Gonna showcase the culture and lifestyle of Lake of the Ozarks. We'll talk with her uh, also. Got to tell you about my friends at Holes Auto Body. Remember when I ran my Nissan into that uh, PVC pipe filled yeah. with concrete? Yeah, I remember that. Uh, yeah. A lot of people probably remember that. Well, so we, we gave her a little facelift. We took her to Holes Auto Body, and we'll show you before and after. Also, looks like the City of Osage Beach Board of Alderman. They talked again about this uh, interesting not the sales tax, the property tax, uh, abatement, or whatever it is. Well, man, their last meeting, it got crazy. It got yeah. pretty heated. We're talking about that new apartment complex on Nichols Road. Yeah, very interesting stuff. And they're, they're yeah, with the, I guess, property tax, where they're not going to have to pay it for so many years. Well, somebody thinks that's a really bad idea. It got kind of heated. Also got our hometown heroes. And then uh, a local man. Mm. was charged with attempting to murder his ex-wife at a funeral home. Weird story. No less. Weird so story. That and football galore. Listen, three of the last four weeks, there's been one person sitting on this dais right now mm. who's either had first or tied for first. And, and it's it not me. It ain't Uncle no, Chris. No, no, not me. We'll tell you about that. Mizzou, Cardinals are done. Chiefs sneak by just barely on Monday Night Football. So, so much to talk about on this week's show. After this, from Daryl Cunningham. Hey everybody, Daryl Cunningham with Slumberland Furniture at the Lake. You're going to get a twofer today. We brought in a tent, it's time to do inventory, and rather than count it, I just want to sell it. So come check out our tent sale, lots of great deals out there. Also, we have a huge bedding sale, up to 30% off of Sealy, Posturepedics, Stearns and & Foster, and Tipperpedics. Come check it out, we'll help you sleep better and get some great deals in the process. Daryl Cunningham with Slumberland Furniture at the Lake. All right, to get us started this week, I am back. Okay? You're back, yeah. Some people probably noticed it was Nathan Bechtold, and I did not appreciate that you called him better looking and, and smarter. smarter. Yeah. Uh, I, had to, I had to go back and like, did he really? <laughs> not that you were inaccurate with that assessment, but so I'm happy to be back. I was in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina with my dad, yeah. as well as his one of his bus buddies, Roger Gibson and his son, Tim, and we did a father-son golf trip. We golfed four rounds. That's where uh, all the rich people go. Right. Yeah, we were very out of place <laughs> there. Also golfing from the women's tees and people behind it. What's different out there is, I mean, those golf courses stay busy. And mm. so you always have four that you're waiting on in front of you and four behind you waiting to tee off. So you have people watching you, which doesn't help when you're not a good golfer. Yeah, a little more pressure. Yeah. You know, so I was embarrassed the whole time, but it didn't even matter. At the time of my life, we got to golf uh, Polly's Plantation, Caledonia, Tiger's Eye, mm. and then the Moorlands. Uh, it was unbelievable. You ever been out there? I never have, no. And you used to golf, right? Uh, I used to before I got old, yeah. And, and did you get to go golf any places, like crazy courses or PGA courses or any uh, of those? You know what? I got to do a couple of the, uh, like when I lived in Dallas, they did the Byron Nelson tournament and the Colonial Golf Tournament, and I got to do the, the media uh, golf tournament. So I did get to play some pretty nice places. Yeah. Uh, there's so much different than what I'm oh, used to seeing yeah. out here. There's hazards and problems everywhere, but I you mean, had alligators everywhere, yeah, right? Wow. Yeah, there were alligators right there in, in these ponds and little mini lakes. I mean, they'd come out and they would just sunbathe on the side. It was pretty cool. And they had these little black squirrels. Like here really? we have regular squirrels that black face squirrels, almost looks like mini skunks. Huh. They weren't scared of humans at all. They'd chase after you, it didn't matter, but Wow. I'll tell you, to not have to worry about what time I was getting up hmm. or what my next responsibility was. Right. It took me like three days to get to the point Just where I could not feel guilty or yeah. think I should have been doing something. <laughs> hey, steak and lobster and crab oh, cakes the whole time. Wow. And we went shopping and it was just awesome. Dad mm. and I had so much fun on a resort we stayed at was right there by the ocean. You had the pools and then you had palm trees and then this white sandy beach and just the waves. Mm. So you could sit out on that patio 24 hours and just enjoy that. It was unbelievable. Wow. Um, 
it was a trip of a lifetime. My dad uh, made it possible, and of course, Roger Gibson. It was unbelievable, but I'm glad to be back, feeling real refreshed, rejuvenated, and uh, ready to uh, end 22 on a high note. And just, you know, a uh, word about, like, you've got the best dad ever. 100%. <clears throat> Your dad, Kevin, who also owns and runs uh, Chances Are mm -hmm. Restaurant and Lori, if you haven't met Kevin, you need, to, you need to get over there. Just like the greatest guy in the world. You were really blessed with him as a dad. And, yeah, I agree 100%. <laughs> and then on top of that, he did something to his arm what? on day two. Uh -oh. So we, he got an ace bandage and wrapped it, which mm -hmm. helped a little bit. Had, like, a ligament sticking out of his arm. And ends up tight, wrapping it pretty tight so he could still golf. Yeah. Golf to 44 on the back nine at the <laughs> second toughest course in America, wow. which is the Moorlands. Uh, I mean, and he golfed to 44. So, and he's not that great of a golfer. Like, he's like me. We're both happy to stay under 110, you know? <laughs> Yeah, so it was, it was great. But yeah, my dad is unreal and it was a great trip, but I'm happy to be back and back at it. You guys did a nice job while I was gone. I was a little disappointed in how much you loved Nathan. <laughs> Seemed like you wanted him to stay, but I'm back. Well, okay? he's like a model. He's like Tom Selleck up here, yeah. you know? I mean, gee whiz. <laughs> Take it down a notch, <laughs> Uncle Chris. All right. So next up, we told you we're going to have Annie Falstich with Lakefront Living Realty. She's going to be on to tell us a little bit about her experience with the American Dream. TV, but before she does, listen, high school football this Friday. Check it out. Oh, ho, ho. this one's going to be fun. It's the rivalry game of rivalry games. The Lakers and Yellow Jackets, they really don't like each other much. And Lake TV will be live to show you how it all goes down. We'll be at the Jaws of Death Friday night, Camdenton and Lebanon. It all starts at 6.30 with a COMC pregame show. That's at 6.30, kickoff set for 7. Who gets the bragging rights this year, Camdenton or Lebanon? Join Lake TV Friday night to find out. All right, and as we promised you, we're gonna have Annie Falstich. Here she is with Lakefront Living Realty. And I was talking about American Dream TV and how there's some featured Lake of the Ozarks real estate agents. And Annie is actually one of those. And you and your husband, Jesse, you guys own Lakefront Living Realty. So first, super excited you're here to give us a little insight. And second, I wanted to ask you uh, to tell everybody about Lakefront Living Realty. Perfect, well, thanks so much for having me. Um, I always enjoy yeah. hanging out with you, Will. Lakefront Living Realty, we are an exclusive lakefront real estate brokerage nationwide. So we cover thousands of lakes nationwide. Mm -hmm. um, Jesse and I own the state of Missouri and we're partnerships uh, for the state of Arkansas as well. So here in Missouri, of course, we only sell Lake of the Ozarks. This is our hometown. Yeah. This is our stomping ground. This is where we live and boat and raise our kids. But we have Truman Lake. Uh, Table Rock, Bull Shoals, and Tanny Como as well for the state of Missouri. Yeah, and really when you say specializing in lakefront, there's a lot of things that go into purchasing property or a home on any body of water. And so that's where you guys come in and say, hey, you really need to consider this, this, this. And before we make this kind of purchase or sell a home on a lake, here's the things we need to do. And so you really put people ahead of the game when it comes to buying or selling real estate on the lake, correct? Correct. I mean, that's really our goal is to add extreme value is that is our niche. That's all that we cover. Lakefront and lake access properties. That's what our agents, uh, we live the lake lifestyle ourselves, all of us. We all boat in different capacities, yeah. um, utilizing the lake for all that it's worth in different areas. And the different lakes are also different. So you really need to know the ins and the outs and the nuances of owning lakefront so that's what we're here to help both buyers and sellers with yeah and when you say you live the lake style lake lifestyle listen annie's kids are like <laughs> more versed on the body or on lake of the ozarks than i am those are crazy your young ones you know farah they just run around <laughs> on the dock shafe he, he's been there done that i'm like i'm afraid to go over there not not the kiddo so no. you really do live the lake lifestyle and that brings us to american dream tv a national television show and a few select Lake of the Ozarks Realtors uh, somehow got selected, you being one of those. So talk about this experience. What exactly are you doing with American Dream TV? Yeah, I will. So super cool opportunity for the lake itself. Um, the American Dream TV is in hundreds of cities you know, nationwide. I mean, this is not, not a new program. Um, they have 
financing the American dream and selling the American dream. They cover larger cities across the nation and that is growing rapidly. Yeah. Um, so we're really excited that they chose Lake of the Ozarks um, to host one of the shows and it is Selling the Ozarks. They've chosen a handful of local agents here to really talk about lifestyle and culture. It's really just a very small portion of real estate, actually um, 20%. They don't want us to go yeah. any more than 20% uh, talk about real estate. It's truly about the culture and the lifestyle of what Lake of the Ozarks has to offer. Which is perfect for you because you know real estate is the business but all that goes into the culture and the lifestyle, you living that, that's really your business model too, is the real estate, what we have to do, the numbers, the paperwork, that's part of it, but putting these families in this dream home to achieve this lifestyle, that's really what you love to do. And so I imagine in your segment, is it one segment, is it multiple segments that you got to showcase that? Yeah, so far, um, so it's multiple episodes. I mean, as of right now, we you know at least know that we have six. And within each episode, each agent will have a segment. Mm -hmm. And the difference with this program compared to others, um, I've had experience with HGTV and, yeah. and some others. This is not there. They call it real TV, not reality TV. The agents ourselves, we are directing the content of our segment. Mm -hmm. So we're producing the information and really setting that up um, how we see. So it's, they're, they're giving us free reigns. They, they give us a, a guy with a camera and tell us to go have at it. Have, so, have at it. Yeah. So these are like network finished episodes. And so in each finished episode, all of the Lake of the Ozarks Realtors have a segment. You'll be going back and forth. Yep. And so I don't know if you can tell us how much is going to be in your segment. Can you at least tell us like when your segment is going to debut or when we can look forward to that? Yeah, we have already um, shot the first two, but the first one uh, is airing this Saturday. Oh, so perfect Saturday timing. morning. Yep, perfect timing. Saturday morning on CBS at 11.30. 11.30, and that's the Color 10 Springfield CBS that's Local. gonna be on. And now if you can't catch that this Saturday at 11.30, there's on-demand options as well, correct? For sure, I mean, they it's really gonna cover across the board. So you're gonna be able to find it very easy if you can't. Um, watch it this Saturday at 11.30, DVR it, but you're going to find it on Apple TV, Roku, Fire Stick, um, YouTube, you know, yeah. a lot of those All those options. platforms All that those platforms. you want to watch that at home on in case you can't watch this Saturday. So can you give us a, a little insight on what we might see on, on your segment or on the first episode? Yeah, the first episode, I'll give you a little insight, but I did talk about shootout. Oh, okay. Yeah. Talk about shootout. So you may see some shootout faces yeah. or yep. video or events in there. And so numerous realtors this Saturday, American Dream TV. What's the experience been like for you personally going from normally being just on camera to kind of playing director, producer, <laughs> creative mind? What's that been like? It's actually been a lot of fun. I mean, it's a huge learning curve. So once we got through the first one, of course, then you dissect it and go, okay, well, what can I do better? So I, I do anticipate each you know episode is going to get better for all all of us host. Um, but really, I've seen a, a glimpse of the first one and you're gonna wanna check it out. I, I'm excited about it. I think everybody did a great job and moving forward, it's just, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And quite an honor to get selected and to showcase and represent Lake of the Ozarks on a national scale. Cause the hopes are with this series, People see this and from other parts of the country, they're like, man, I want to check out Lake of the Ozarks. I'm going to give Annie a call and get a tour. So, well, so kudos to you and Jesse and all your crew. Again, 1130 is the first episode debuting this Saturday on Collar 10 CBS. You can also watch that on on-demand platforms. And then I'm guessing it'll debut the next episode every Saturday at 1130 on Collar 10. I, I believe so. Okay. Yep, that's the, the drill as far as I know. But we are always looking for new content. So come to me if you have a platform that you would like to showcase, a home that you are thinking about selling or that you would like to showcase, anything unique yeah. to the lake, I'm always open to you know look for that new content. Could be on American Dream TV with Annie Falstage. We'll be back on Cup of Coffee after this. Hey, be sure to join us for this week's COMC Community Spotlight Show. We get to know one of the best cooks in the whole lake area. It's Papo. it's Christopher Galloway from Papo's Pizzeria. Some great stories, and you know what? He's actually a musician too. So be sure to join us, Lake TV's Community Spotlight Show, every day, right here.
Listen, you heard it right there, 902, 302, and 702. You gotta check out this week's Community Spotlight. Chris Galloway is, everyone knows him because he's the pizza guy, right? Greatness, yeah. Incredible pizza. Yep. Popo's popping up everywhere across the Midwest. Quincy, Illinois, Springfield, Columbia. Of course, you know about the one here. But listen, you're going to find out some things about Chris Galloway you probably didn't know. He's yeah. fascinating. He really is. I mean, a professional musician. Uh, how he and his whole family are just into this food thing. Kind of like you and your dad. Just real food people. You know, you know good food. Well, Chris Galloway certainly knows good food. Oh, and don't get me started on Mama Cita's, which mm. is Melissa, I believe, his wife's mom's menu essentially her recipes so they got some great history you want to check that out another local business i want to tell you about my friend over at holes auto body eric hole mm -hmm. you know much like annie um i got to know him through b and i over on the west side you know yeah. we know b and i here in the lake area mm -hmm. and they're great people and mom and dad alan and carol are just the salt of the earth amazing they've got that auto body shop in camdenton so i had to take it in because we curved the front of the Nissan so many times. The, right. the bumper was hanging off. Yeah, you like backed into a pole or something. Well, that right? was that was just the bumper up front. So that was issue number one. <laughs> and I put that off with duct tape and glue and prayer yeah. for as long as I could yep. until I backed it into the telephone pole at the office right. with a long PVC pipe filled with cement. Mm. It was there to, to hold and hang like a one hundredth of a pound flag. That's why it was filled with cement right through my trunk. Mm. And so took it in and uh, they took care of it. They replaced it. They buffed it. They waxed it, polished it. You see what they did there. And uh, I just wanted to thank Eric and his family. And I want to tell you guys, if you need a local auto body shop who's honest and will work with you, they do everything from boats, uh, PWCs, RVs, trailers, and obviously wow. any kind of vehicle you can dream up. But good people, great supporters of the local community. And so I just wanted to shout out Eric, Allen, and Carol at Holes Auto Body because that looks a lot better, doesn't Your it? Your car's looking good. I saw it this morning. I didn't even know it was you because yeah. it's looking so good. But, you know, we all need that at some point in time because we're always going to get a scratch, right. always going to get a ding. I've backed into a pole, you know, so we all do it. We all need it. I didn't want to tell that story because it goes <laughs> to show that I have some issues from time to time. <laughs> we but all do. They also, you know, they touched up the paint. They took out all the mini dents with their crew they had on site the day they were there. Hooked me up with a great deal on that. And basically it looks brand new. Andrew says, that car has not looked that good since you bought it. Yeah. He says it might even look better now than when you bought it from that dealership. Yeah. So big shout out to our friends at Holes Auto Body. Okay, on to our next story. We've been telling you about this apartment complex, you know, $63 million yep. development going to help hopefully offer some relief to the lack of affordable housing here at the lake. So we told you about it over the last couple of weeks, but since last week's show, when you had Nathan Bechtel on, there's been a Osage Beach uh, Board of Aldermen meeting, and it got a little tense. Yeah, it did. Uh, you know, and, and I think this is actually healthy. This is healthy government where you have people come in and you argue all the different sides and you figure out the best way to go ahead. Everybody knows we need affordable housing uh, in the lake area. So they're talking about building these um, uh, apartments off of Nichols Road, uh, giving them a tax abatement, the, uh, the builders to do that, which is fairly common in right. these situations. The problem is if you give a tax abatement, Who's given up that tax money? Well, the school system uh, stepped up and said, that's a lot of our money that we're talking about. There's gonna be more kids coming in and you're taking our tax money away. So how are we gonna deal with that? So things got a little bit heated. Yeah, and, and so this meeting, Gail Griswold, who's the president of the Camerton School Board, when she took the podium, she said that 70% of the tax revenue is currently collected and that's gonna be abated. That would go to the Camerton School District. She mm -hmm. goes, just because this is a mechanic mechanism that's legal it doesn't make it right i think you're taking the largest tax away from the school we have a lot of debt to pay back and a lot of work to do you're impacting the staff and you're impacting our kids she went on to say that cost about thirteen thousand dollars per year to educate a student wow that was a stunning number for me thirteen thousand a year per student to to educate them um and so tagged Tegethoff, who's the, one of the developers, yeah. the argument that we're putting a financial burden on the school is flawed in the sense that every home in Camden County has a student, one student in it who's living in a home that's not worth $2 million is putting a burden on the school. It's just not how schools are funded or how municipal finance works, he said. 
Um, and then Griswold fired back, please understand economics. You're comparing a metro area with a lot of competition, which this is really a good point in housing and income, but everyone is going to flock to this and we're going to have more than 25 students from that development. And if we don't, then I'll eat my word, she said. Mm -hmm. But you need to be prepared for that impact. So what she's saying is so many new students would go to the campus over there off of KK or wherever that campus is, the Osage Beach uh, Elementary, that's actually part of the Camdenton School District, that they would see an influx, probably at least 25, and there's gonna be no increase in funding to that school. Yeah, and, and so she that's says, a good point. And she says, if that's not the case, I'll eat my words, but you guys better be ready for that. And as the school district, the president of the school board, she was concerned. Um, however, the board did vote to approve mm -hmm. uh, by the end of it. And so hopefully that by the time this all comes to a close and they move forward on this, hopefully there can be some kind of, I don't know how you would make this up to the school district or offer assistance, but it seems to be a serious concern for Camdenton. Yeah, and it wasn't even a close vote. The board voted unanimously to uh, pass the bill, uh, which grants uh, the tax abatement, designates the area of land Sycamore Creek uh, blighted and approves the development plan. So that's all moving forward. But the school district, and in particular, the school board president, Gail Griswold, sent the red flag out there. Okay, you know, we all know we need more housing, but don't hurt the school system while you're doing it. And so we'll have to see how that uh, that develops. It's all a part of progress. It's sometimes growth is hard. Yeah, you know? and because we haven't seen a lot of these new developments. And so with an, the, the incentive is the tax abatement. That mm -hmm. makes people want to come here. We'll give you a little price break. We haven't had a lot of this before. So the school district is also saying, hey, when we get these developments, it might be a good idea to include us in the planning uh, ahead of time yeah. because we'd like to we'd like to be at the table. We'd like to have a say in this because we're the ones that are gonna feel this the most. We'll of course keep you updated well, on and, this. Yeah, and this, this, uh, it, it's, this is gonna be an issue with every new development. This was an issue with the, uh, the mall out yeah. there where you know, tax incentives, TIFs, what's good, what's bad, how do you, you best, you know, who's, who's gaining and is, are the people building this all gonna get rich and the, and the locals, you know, suffer for it? That's what they're trying to figure out as they go forward. So it's all progress, it's all pretty good. And it's almost as if there's a false disliking for any development or tax break or anything because some of the headlines over the last few years from the soccer complex and the casino mm -hmm. and all of these things just make people think any kind of tiff, any kind of tax break or abatement is bad. Right. You gotta do something to attract new developments and we've got issues here at the lake, that mm -hmm. being affordable housing. So I'm all for it. Yeah, I, me too. I, we do need the housing. Uh, we just need to make sure we do it in the right way and it looks like they're all doing that. So Absolutely. that's good. All right. So. On to our next segment. It's our Central Ozarks Medical Center hometown hero. Yeah. And this week, it's actually the CEO of Central Ozarks Medical Center, Kelly Miller. It was her idea for hometown hero. She said there's so many great people in this community that do all kinds of great things. Let's highlight some of those people. How about that? And so we got a nomination from Angie Duncan, who's a staff member with Central Ozarks Medical Center. And she said, hey, I think even though it's a COMC uh, award, or recognition, Kelly deserves to be recognized, and I couldn't agree more. Uh, yeah, I Kelly, agree. Kelly Miller's been the CEO at Central Ozarks Medical Center for about two years. In those two years, Central Ozarks Medical Center has become the fastest growing medical uh, institute in the entire Midwest. They've got clinics going up in these rural areas. They've got clinics going into schools. They've got dental clinics they'll bring. And so it's serious business when you entrust somebody who is a business mind like Kelly Miller with all this government money, how can we do the best with it? And Kelly Miller and the crew at CMC has been doing a great job of growing and offering uh, health care for people that may not have insurance, may not be able to afford it, and not just, you know, a family doctor, like I said, dental, mental health, uh, behavioral health, all of those things. And on top of that, she's got two boys and her daughter, Lily, that she just loves, mm. travels around, going to football games, baseball games, uh, vacations. She loves her family. On top of that, she also has the Blue Cat Tavern and Grill Which is in greatness. Roach, Missouri. Yeah. Some of the best food yeah. at the lake. Prime rib, last or third Saturday of the month unbelievable prime rib, but she loves people. And Angie said, you know, she loves doing things for her staff at COMC. She loves doing things for her staff at Blue Cat. She is somebody who just loves people and loves giving back. 
and it was her idea for this segment because she wanted to highlight people. Well, it's your turn, Kelly, to be highlighted and recognized as this week's hometown hero presented by COMC. Rather fitting, I think. Absolutely. She's greatness, and uh, man, are they growing, COMC. New in Eldon, new in Lori, new down on the Strip. Uh, before that, you know, Osage Beach, Camdenton, Richland, so they're greatness. Yep. So we... Like, we love you, Kelly. Thank you for all you do. Our hometown hero. All right, so our last local story. It's a little crazy. Crazy. Um, local man charged an attempt to murder his ex-wife, and it's done at a funeral home in Eldon back in 2021. Well, he's finally been charged. Yeah, right. So he, uh, this guy apparently, according to the probable cause documents, uh, officers dispatched to the funeral home. Man inside with a gun authority say he'd come to the funeral home and approached his ex-wife, saying he wanted to talk to her. She declined and resisted his attempt. So he just pulls out a gun and says, okay, I'm going to do it right here, man. And then and some great citizen jumps in, wrestles him to the ground, and avoids a major, major, major catastrophe. But how crazy is that? Uh, just, just nuts. During that struggle, uh, the gun was discharged, yeah. nearly hitting multiple people. One person said they heard Duncan say, leave me alone and let me do what I came to do with my ex-wife. So he had no good intentions. Mm. First degree domestic assault and armed criminal action are each punishable by up to 15 years in prison. And the unlawful use of a weapon is punishable by four years of incarceration. However, the first degree domestic assault is a violent crime that requires the defendant to serve 85% of his sentence before he would even be eligible for parole. He gets 34 years, meaning he's got to serve 85% of that before he'd be eligible for parole. So you got like 28 years yeah. before he could even consider, which is probably where this guy belongs. Miller County Prosecuting Attorney Ben Woodfrey is grateful for the quick response of the Eldon Police Department back in April of 21 and their hard work in solving this case. Just crazy some of these headlines oh, we've had. Kind of spooks you a little bit when you hear stories like that. Isn't Just crazy. Yeah. All right, so we got to run through sports quick. Cardinals knocked out. Yep, they're done. That's First crazy. Round. Yachty and Pujols. What a magical year mm -hmm. to only get two extra games. That yep. was sad. Mizzou lost again on the road to Florida. But let me ask you real quick. Even though they've lost these three, do you think this buys Drinkwitz a little grace because they've been such close games yeah. against really good teams? I do. Yeah. I, I You know, I mean, they, they really almost should have beaten Georgia, the should number one team in the country. Should have won the week before. Yeah, they had that one three times and blew it. Should have beat Georgia. Played Florida well. So, yeah, I think Drink's doing a good job. He needs just to figure out how to get him over the hump. But they're only going to give him so much time. So, maybe another year after this to see if he can get it turned around. But I see progress there. Yeah, 0-3 in the SEC. But, man, those are tough three games yeah. to be that close. Got to find a way to win one of those. All right, Chiefs, you guys saw it. Crazy ending. Uh, Kelsey only had 27 yards receiving, four <laughs> touchdowns. Four. Uh, that's an NFL record on Monday night. Next week, you see the helmets behind me. The Bills, baby. Let's go Buffalo. Four and one, four and one, so squaring you're, off. You're, you're, you're rooting for the Bills over the Chiefs. Absolutely, okay. I'm rooting for I'm the rooting Bills. I'm rooting for the Chiefs over the Bills, although I do think the Bills are going to win. Real quick, want to show you guys the standings for the AFC West. You see KC all alone. And if you look at the conference standings, it's Buffalo and Kansas City, the only two 4-1 and one teams in the conference. One team is going to leave that game next Sunday with two losses. Yep. And that's going to make me think uh, about our pick em. real quick. Three last four weeks, been in first. Yeah. We're tied for first. You're rocking it. Sitting up top in the overall standings, as you see there. But how about a shout-out? To Kevin Hornick. Man, he had a great week. Yeah, he did. He beat us all this week, didn't he? 12 and 4, 13 points. Got the bonus point. You see the overall standings right there. But as we look at our pick we're going to run through them real quick. Commanders or Bears? I got the Bears. I got the Bears. Ravens or the Giants? I got the Ravens. I do too. Bengals or the Saints? Bengals. Me too. Colts or the Jaguars? Colts. Boy, that's weird. I know. We're I'm the Colts as well. Vikings over the Dolphins. I got the Vikes. Patriots over the Browns. I got the Browns. That's where we're different this week. That, that, I think that's the only one we're different this week. Packers over the Jets. I got the Packers. 49ers or the Falcons. Niners. Me too. Bucks over the Steelers. I got the Bucks. I got the Bucks. I got the Cardinals over the Seahawks. Yep, me too. I got the Rams over the Panthers. I got the Rams and they're my money pick. Nice. Okay. Very good. I'm going to be brave. Buffalo <laughs> over KC as my money pick. Wow. Buffalo's not losing. Wow. Again. Okay. I got the Eagles over the Cowboys. I got the Eagles. 
I got the Chargers over the Broncos. And I got the Chargers. Only one pick was different. We had six different ones last week, and we split them. Just one different this week. Hey, that's how you can uh, ensure that you don't let me gain any ground on you, <laughs> you know. All right, so lots of great stuff. Of course, this Friday night, Camden to Lebanon. Yeah. Crazy, both 7-0. and Right here on Lake TV. 6-15, yep. a little early this week. We told you about Chris Galloway. Also, make sure you check out uh, What's Burning with Kevin KB Burns, 702, 502, and 1102. That's going to do it for Uncle Chris. I'm Wild Will. Until next week, we'll see you then. <laughs>